Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 115. For this one, we play in our first European meetup game. It's in London at Asper's Casino. It covers like a four day event that we did out there and uh, it's pretty special. So I get into some big hands, some interesting spots, uh, but before we get into it, a few announcements. The the next meetup game that we're doing is February 7th and February 8th in the Los Angeles area at Gardens Casino. And then we're going to MGM Springfield, Massachusetts. That'll be February 18th and February 19th. There'll be uh, more information in the description box below, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to see you, Andrew and uh, me, and we'll have some drinks, play some poker, have a good time. Also, Marvin just got a haircut, so he's looking great. And uh, we've got some big, exciting things going on. All right, let's go ahead and get started. It's time to get ready for the first ever European meetup game. Marvin's trying to blend in with my clothes so that I'll take him with me, but he's a cat and I'm not fooled. See you, dude. I bought the cheapest flight that I could find. There are a few layovers. The first one's in San Francisco where I catch up on some vlogs. Then I stop in Barcelona where the rain is mainly falling everywhere. You want to stay here for a while? I'll pay you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, thank you. That'd be great. I'm not sure I want to go out there ever, but eventually I do. Finally, I land in London. I only have a few hours in the middle of the city, so I see some sights, have a pint with one of my best mates, and it's off to Asper's Casino where all the action will go down. We're here for four days of straight cash, homie. The first evening I walk in and we don't have quite the crowd that I was hoping for in the beginning. That would quickly change as the place absolutely fills up and would stay packed across all four days. There are even some big poker legends in the mix. People actually flew in from countries all over the world to get some Bradley pounds, including Bulgaria, Switzerland, Singapore, Germany, Denmark, Iceland, Canada, Italy, Belgium, Scotland, and oh yeah, at least one guy came in from the US. <laughs> The first two days, I don't get into very many interesting hands. I play 1-1, one, 1-2, one, 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 and a tiny bit of 2-5 towards the end of day two, without much luck of any kind. Across all four stakes, I ran pretty cold. Actually, the 2-5 at the end was the most interesting for me. Had some fun, um, but for the most part, didn't get a lot of hands to create content from, unfortunately, even over the last two days. So I lost 220, 220 pounds. I lost 90 pounds yesterday. And I actually feel good about that considering the cards that I've gotten. Day three has a different feel to it. I start out by going to my first ever English Premier League game. It's an amazing experience. There's a tradition where the visiting fans salute the home fans for being so hospitable. And then the home fans yell back saying, it's our pleasure to have you. Thanks for coming by. Once the football match ends, I buy into the 2-5 game for 1300. In this hand, I pick up pocket sixes in the middle position. It's a straddle pot. I open to 35. The button calls, small blind who's a younger player from Switzerland, three bets to 155. I don't think there's any harm in folding here. I'm in position and I haven't hit a set in 17 hours of playing in London though, so I'm pretty sure that I'm due. I make the call. The button folds, it's heads up, the flop comes queen eight three rainbow. I guess the poker gods don't care how long it's been since I've hit a set. There's a very dry board. The young Swiss takes a considerable amount of time before down betting to 130. Seems too early to fold a pair to a young Euro. It's a good spot for him to squeeze pre-flop, so he could have 3-bet with a very wide range. I call the 130 in case I'm up against a hand like Ace-King, Ace-5, or a variety of other non-paired hands. The turn is the 9 of hearts. The opponent takes his foot off the gas and checks. Now I think there's a pretty good chance that I'm ahead. I don't want to give him an opportunity to catch up if I am. I also don't want to bet too much in case the small blind is just checking for pot control. I fire for 225. This should be enough to properly deny equity for most hands that I'm beating. Small blind makes the call. That's somewhat scary. The river is a king. I'm no longer even beating ace king. The small blind fires for 260. I'm over it and I immediately fold. The player would later tell me that he had aces. Could have lost a lot less during that hand in a few different ways, but I was getting impatient and forced it a little to have some footage for the vlog. It did not work out. I add on for 1,000. I'm in for 2,300 pounds total, then pick up ace four offsuit in the under the gun straddle. Under the gun plus two opens at 35. The big blind calls. I defend my straddle. We go three ways to the flop. It's ace, queen, four with two hearts. We've got top and bottom pair. The big blind checks. I check to the pre-flop raiser. He fires for 40. The big blind calls. There are too many draws and too many opponents for me to flat. I raise to 165. Under the gun plus two is not ready to give up. He calls. The big blind folds. It's heads up. The turn is the jack of diamonds. I didn't want to see any big cards. I check. Under the gun plus two bets 210. I'm definitely not going away for that price. I call, I'd love to see a four, but I would settle with any card that's low and black. Nope, the river is the 10 of diamonds. There's four to the straight out there. I check, can't really beat anything. The opponent checks. I flip over my two pair. 
Under the gun plus two, turns over King Jack offsuit. He called my check raise with a gutter and a backdoor flush draw. On the turn, he was drawing dead to six outs and bet. He drills the river and checks back. That one's frustrating. We're not off to a good start at all. Here I have ace queen suited in the hijack. Under the gun plus two opens a 20. He's a short stack. I flat. We're heads up. The flop is 8 3 deuce with two hearts. We have the nut flush draw with two overs and a backdoor straight draw. Under the gun plus two bets 20. Since he's so short, I jam for 120 effective. The opponent calls rather quickly. We're probably going to need some help on one of these streets. The turn is the 10 of clubs. That's not going to do it. The river's a red nine, but it's a diamond. We completely brick that run out. I turn over the ace high. I'm shocked to see that the opponent called the jam with a worse ace high. But he made a pair of tens on the turn. Wow, that's hard to do. <laughs> Did they make the blog? Probably. <laughs> Currently stuck 1,350 pounds, which is the equivalent of about 28,000 US, or something around there. The good news is that I pick up ace king of spades. It's just like ace queen, except one better. The under the gun player straddled. Under the gun plus two calls for 10. Middle position player raises to 40. I three bet to 120. Small blind puts in a cold four bet to 300. Why won't he just let me win? Under the gun plus two and the middle position player both fold. The action's on me. I have a very difficult decision to make. Cold four bets typically signify a ton of strength. Calling or folding both seem somewhat reasonable. I go with the third option. Oh, we have. Tens? I wasn't sure if I should jam or not. I thought there was a good chance that I'd get snap called. Luckily, the player quickly folded pocket tens. We went a few hundred without having to see a flop. That's a great outcome. Later, I pick up ace nine suited under the gun plus one. The under the gun player straddled, so I'm first to act. I open to 35. The button calls. Under the gun calls as well. We go three ways to the flop. It's nine deuce, deuce, rainbow. It's a great flop for us, and no one should expect that we have top pair, top kicker. Under the gun checks. It's a paired board with no draws. We don't need to make it too much. I bet 45. I want to get value out of small pocket pairs that are drawing slim. The button calls. Under the gun raises to 165. I've seen this player get caught bluffing before. That's what it looks like is going on here. I can't imagine any strong hand putting in a raise at this point. If he had trips or better on a board this dry, I imagine he'd flat. There's also only one possible combination of pocket nines left and only one combination of pocket deuces. Given what I know about the under the gun player and the fact that this line doesn't make much sense, I call for 120 more. The button folds, or heads up. The turn is a king. Under the gun fires again, this time for 225. I'm not calling 165 on the flop. The fold to a bet of 225 on the turn. I call. The river is a four. The opponent has no quit in him. He unloads the clip, making it 450. I take one look at him. I notice that he doesn't seem that comfortable, and his pulse is throbbing. Feels like a bluff. I make the hero call. The opponent isn't thrilled to see that. He tosses his cards face down into the muck. It's important for him to know that I owned his soul though. I flip over my cards. We win a very big hand, taking advantage of some odd plays by the opponent. The pot is pushed in our direction. Things seem to have turned around and we're about even on the night. Next we pick up Poe Jiggities in middle position. It's a straddle pot. Under the gun plus two opens at 35. The action's on me. There's the age old saying that there's no right way to play Jiggities, so it doesn't matter what I do. I go with the call. The cutoff who's the player who beat me with King Jack earlier, puts in a three bet to 125. I've seen him three bet light before and do a few other odd things post flop. Under the gun plus two folds. My hand is under repped and I'm up against an aggressive opponent who has some Bradley pounds that I'd like to get back. I'm not folding. I call for 90 more. We're heads up. The flop is 955 with two spades. We've got an overpair to the board. I checked at the three better. He down bets to 100. That's a reasonable price. I call. I'm hoping that no bigger cards and no spades come out. The dealer's cool and puts a 10 of diamonds on the board. We still have an overpair. I check. Cutoff fires for 310. He only has 760 total on his stack. It's a tough situation to be in. The fact that he bet so much more on the turn than he did on the flop makes me think that he might have picked up equity with a diamond draw, a straight draw, or both, and is bluffing. I don't want to call and possibly let him get there or see a bad river card and have him jam on me for only 450 in a massive pot. Against known tight players that probably fold, I can't do that against this guy. Four. We don't get snap called, that's good news. It's possible that we're still beat by queens or another overpair. I'm not feeling great about it. What makes matters even worse is that the river is the ace of clubs. We don't even beat ace high flush draws anymore. My cards are already face up. Something bad happens. The cutoff turns over his cards, which typically only occurs if he has the winner. We're fortunate, that isn't the case here. The player has 10-9 of hearts. He had top two pair on the turn, but my two pairs better since I have jiggities and fives. 
I'm surprised that I've won this one with all the action in the run out. Session has completely turned around. We're up nearly a thousand pounds at the moment. I'm not gonna let the British beat me three days in a row. In the last hand that we'll go over, I pick up a shack of hearts in the cutoff to straddle pot. I open to 35. The button three bets to 100. This player's been three betting a decent amount as well. I call, we're heads up. The flop comes queen seven deuce rainbow. It's about as dry as it gets. We don't have a pair, but we do have some backdoor draws and an over. I check, the button bet's 85. Can't let it go for a small bet like that. May even be ahead. I call with plans to potentially check raise if the turn gives me equity. It does not. The turn is another queen. Maybe I'll be able to rep trips at some point though. I check, the button checks back. He may not have much either. The river is the five of diamonds. I have some showdown value. Still, I could be up against ace king and I'm losing to that. I bet 165, hoping that it'll look like I'm betting for value with a strong hand and want to get called. There's no need to bet larger since a larger bet likely wouldn't get hands like jacks, kings, or aces to fold. The button eventually lays his hand down. He'd later tell me that he had king nine. We were ahead the whole way. One last pot comes to us. We got off to a tumultuous start. It wasn't looking good. Then it ended on a positive note with a big win. Day three just wrapped up and it was a great session. I played two five the whole time, played for five and a half hours. I won 13.45, was in some really interesting spots and it wasn't easy on me. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be ahead, but luckily my my hands were good at showdown and the big pots and that's not what happened the last two days. I ran about as cold as possible the first two days. So I'm glad that I've got enough footage to make an interesting vlog. And now it's time to grab drinks with everybody. We had drinks with people each of the first two nights as well, but tonight feels much better after booking a winning session, especially considering that I was stuck over 1,300 at one point. All four days were incredible though. We were there for enough time to play with hundreds of people and get to know quite a few on a much more personal level. I lost 125 pounds the fourth and final day, playing 1-1 and 1-2, but still profited over four figures in US dollars altogether for the trip. We'll certainly be back. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Huge thanks goes out to everybody in England and everybody who came in from all across Europe. That was something that was uh, really special for Andrew and me and we'll definitely be back probably sometime after the WSOP and maybe we'll go to a few other places in Europe on the next trip. Um, next meetup games are gonna be uh, February 7th and 8th at Gardens Casino in the Los Angeles area, and then February 18th and 19th at MGM Springfield, Massachusetts, and then we'll be going to the Midwest. Uh, last weekend in March, we'll be we'll be uh, in Chicago working with Chicago Charitable Games. So I'll have some more information in the description box down below. Uh, be sure to check that out, and hopefully we'll see you soon. All right, guys, good luck at the tables, and uh, I'll see you next time.